Hi, I'm Hussein, and this is Clement. And for our Stackathon project, we hacked out a small programming language we call Oak, and we built a small JavaScript interpreter for that project. So how it works, a user inputs a string, and we take that string and interpret it as a program. So the first step in the program is generating uh, a token list. So how it does that is using a process called tokenization. And what it does is it goes through and pattern matches each part of the string and generates a massive list of things called tokens. We pattern match things like white space, brackets, um, parentheses, etc., And we generate a massive list of uh, tokens. Next is the actual parsing. And what we do is we go through the token list. And we use this grammar that was inspired by the EBNF uh, syntax notation. So what we do next is go through each of the tokens and check what um, it corresponds to. So if it's a variable keyword, we might go through the variable declaration methods. If it's a conditional keyword, it goes through the conditional methods, etc. And that's uh, essentially how our grammar looks. OK, so we don't have enough time to actually go through all of our code. So you can see some of our methods here. As you can see, our methods are extremely specific. This allowed us to make sure that our um, language is very airtight. We didn't have errors in edge cases and stuff. Um, and we built this entirely from scratch. We didn't like use eval under the hood or use any external libraries. Um, so we didn't like take a JavaScript, uh, their for loop, and just interpret it as a JavaScript for loop. So now Clement can run through some examples in our language. Cool. So we'll, we'll start by declaring a variable called oak. And that's going to be a new instance of our interpreter. And I'm going to show you how you declare variables in our language. So as Hussein mentioned, our language has a very, or the goal for our language was to have a very readable syntax and a very strict syntax. So when you declare a variable, you have to specify the type of that variable. If it's a number, num. If it's a string, str. Function, fn. Similarly, when you declare functions, you have to specify the type of the arguments of the function. So for add or echo here, we're specifying that the arguments have to be numbers. If you pass in anything else when you call these functions, you're going to get an error. Now, here we've declared these variables. If I look at the oak.memory, you'll notice that our variables are stored in the memory here. And you'll notice that we have a few sort of native functions like print, push, index. Now, if we look at basic function calling, we can call you know, add, pass in variables 1, 3. We can even pass in the return value of the echo function, taking in 1 as a parameter into add. And so here we're going to add 1 and 3, 4. Add echo 1 and 3, 4. So 4 plus 4 equals 8. Now, we also have basic conditional statements working. So you'll look at this one. We have if 3 equal 3, we're going to immediately print first. If I were to change this 3 to 4, we get to the else if statement. Echo 1 is 1, so we print second. Now, what if I put hello here, the string that we defined above? Well, we're going to get an error because functions can only be called with parameters that fit the type that we specified before. And if I put 3, that's not going to throw an error, but it's going to go to the else because echo 3 is not equal to 1. Now, let's take a look at from loops, or as you know them in JavaScript, for loops. Hussein mentioned that we really wanted, it, we really wanted our language to be readable and to be very intuitive. So we thought instead of having you know, for loops that have three semicolons inside where you declare a variable inside, we were going to come up with from to with loops. From a starting number to an ending number inclusive with a variable that you're iterating over through the loop. So here we're going to go from 0 to 6, and we're going to print the, the values at these indices in the array that we had above, that we declared above, and you'll see 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. Now we also can do um, nested from loops. So here we'll nest three from two loops, and we'll print the three variables inside those loops. And so we'll get 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 2, et cetera. Now, to show you a slightly more involved program, the infamous FizzBuzz that we all know and love, which kind of combines function calling uh, from two loops, conditional statements. And if we call it here with the number 35, we'll get the first 35 FizzBuzz numbers. At least I hope we wrote this correctly so that we didn't fail the most basic interview question. Next, we, go, we move on to um, recursion. And that was something that we were really excited about. So we've defined here the sort of basic recursive Fibonacci solution, or recursive solution to Fibonacci. And so our language actually supports 
the um, recursion, where you can define a function, call that function within its function body upon declaration, and nothing breaks. So if we call it using a from to loop from 1 to 15 to print the first 15 Fibonacci numbers, we get the first Fibonacci, 15 Fibonacci numbers. And our uh, function gets to the base cases, doesn't break, and ends the sort of recursive call. Now, lastly, we want to show you that our language respects the order of operations. So we've created this function here called always2. What this does is it uses kind of mathematical or arithmetic tricks to basically take in a number, any number, and regardless of that number, it'll always spit out 2 because of the way the, the operations work. But so you see we have tons of parentheses, we have a lot of operators, we have a lot of function calls, and if we call it with, say, the number 7, we get 2. If we call it with this number, we get 2. If we call it with this number, we get 2. And just so that you don't think that we're like messing with you and that this under the hood just like legit always gives 2, if we change, say, this to a 3, you'll notice that we get different numbers. If we change this to like a 4, we get random numbers. And the last thing that I will say is that we also uh, almost managed to create or to be able to implement data structures in our language. We were able to create a binary tree structure using the arrays that we have. And we almost managed to create um, a successful traversal function that would recursively traverse through our tree. But um, there were a few bugs that we weren't able to polish for this presentation. But this is Oak. We hope that you'll use it. And uh, thanks for listening. Cool. My leg is so itchy. Is your leg itchy? No. My leg is so itchy.